Okay, in this video, I'm going to let you watch me do a takeoff from start to finish, from downloading the blueprints into PlanSwift, to renaming the pages, to doing the takeoff, to going through the reports, to getting the estimate out to my customer from start to finish. Let's click on the Home button. We're going to click on the New button. And we're going to search for the plans to download. The job in quote, I'm going to enter the job name in here. In the description, I'm going to enter the customer's name that I'm bidding it for. The builder. Click Next. The bid due date, today's the 25th, so I'm going to put the 30th. The estimator, I'll put myself. The job status, we're going to say assigned, and you can enter terms for your payment if you want or conditions I don't use any of this stuff but you can if you want to contact name we're going to put the primary estimator for the construction company that we're dealing with we'll put his name in there all right and here we'll put the name of the person we're dealing with And his email address. And his phone number. And now we'll get the project address. Click Next. Now, here's our markup properties, and I don't put anything in here at this point. I'll come back after my bid and add up all of my markups. I do want to click this checkbox here where it says Add Tax, my material tax. So I'm not going to put a percentage sign in there. I'm just going to put the, the digits in there, 6.5%. Don't put a percent sign. I'm not going to use any of these calculated takeoff costs or calculated assemblies. I'll go through these later with you, but I don't check any of those boxes at this time. And now I'm going to browse for the plans. Wherever you downloaded those plans, that's where you want to go back and get them. Click on the Plans folder, and PlanSwift doesn't open the folder at this point. <clears throat> Here's all the plans. Now, on a job like this, there's only a few pages, so I'll check all. And if there were 20, 30, 40 pages I don't need, I wouldn't check all those pages. Only the ones that I need for my drywall takeoff and my metal framing takeoff. Then you click Next. <clears throat> next uh, I don't use any of this stuff and just click finished and go ahead and let these plans download 
into Plan Swift. Okay, once that's done, I'm going to go to Page tab, and I'm going to batch rotate pages. I'll click this here. I'm going to start with the first page, and I'm going to look at the print, and it looks like I need to rotate it to the left. So I'm going to click Rotate to the left and Start. And this will rotate all my pages the right way. Now what I do is I before I download the plans into my computer, I like to rename them at that point. So I rename them so that they're easy for me to read. I have the floor plan and the Tiki Hut, the foundation roof, roof framing plan. I want to see the electrical plan, the front and rear elevations, the side elevations, and the site plan. So I've already renamed them. If you haven't renamed them, then at this point I would rename these pages to make them simple so I can look through them and see what they are. Now I haven't looked at this job yet. This will be, this is the first time I'm looking at it. So I'm really starting fresh here so that you can see what I do. Okay, the first thing I want to do now is I want to find the height of the rooms because I'm going to do my furring takeoff first. So let's look in here and see what the ceiling heights are. Uh, 10 foot to 10 foot 8. So this beam is 10 foot. Um, some architects will show you the beam heights on another page. This architect doesn't, so I have to go through. Ceiling height is 10 foot, 10 foot. We've got a 14 foot ceiling here. This beam is probably um, 12 foot, and that's raised up a couple feet with the trusses. 10 foot here, 10 foot here, 10 foot. So the kitchen's 10 foot, the bedroom's 10 foot, the family room's 10 foot. I'm going to assume that everything in here is 10 foot high. All right. Now I'm going to start my furring takeoff, and I'm going to use a linear because I want to attach and just click and go around the whole outside of this job. So my furring is going to be wood furring labor and material. I'm going to use this digitizer right here. Click that. Okay. Uh, we need to scale the page first. So I forgot to scale the page. So yeah, we want to scale the page. And the way we, I do this, I don't like to use this auto scale because if there's been something wrong with the blueprints before they emailed them to me, they might have messed up the scale somehow. So I really don't trust it, although you can trust it. It's it's you know pretty accurate, but just for you know safety caution, I like to do it a, a different way. And I'm going to show you how I do that. I would rather tell the computer what we're looking at here. Right here we have 60 feet from this hash mark to this hash mark, 60 feet. And then we have one that's 30, we have one that's 64 feet over here. So this is what I do. I'm going to go to my scale and I'm going to put 60 feet in here. Click OK. And I'm going to click from hash mark to hash mark. And be very careful when the line disappears is when I'm going to click it. OK, now the other one was 64 feet. So I'm going to say the other way. And I always do it both ways. 64 feet. Click OK. When the line disappears, I'm going to click it. Okay. Now I'm done. I got my scale. Now I know for sure because I told the computer that it's 60, 60 feet here and 64 feet there. So if there's anything been corrupted in the plans, 
we know that we're going by these numbers. Now we'll start again with our takeoff. I am always start with my furring first, and I'm going to go with the wood furring labor and material. I'll click this button here. I'm going to answer these questions. Um, I'm going to name this exterior walls. Furring. Okay, and then that my folder, I'm going to put first floor. Furring. And I'm going to pick my furring tab. My furring height is 10 feet. The on center furring is 24 inches on center. You'll have to look and see what the plans call for. I'm going to use a, a 1 by 2 pressure treated furring strip. Since this beam is 10 foot high, I'll use 10 foot lengths on my vertical pieces and lumber horizontal top pieces I'm going to use a 1 by 2 for the top horizontal piece, unless your builder specifically tells you he wants a 1 by 4. And that piece, I'm going to use a 10 foot, get the longest one I can. This is the horizontal bottom pieces. I'm going to use a 1 by 4 pressure treated there for the baseboard to be nailed to. And that piece can be 10 foot long. We'll use the longest piece as we can. The nails I'm going to use is going to be an inch and a half coil nail. And I'll put those nails at 12 inches on center. And I'm going to pay my furring guy piecework. So I'm going to click the wood furring subcontract. And I click OK. I'll start digitizing the walls. Now I go through the windows and doors and everything and this takes care of all my scrap. I don't put a percentage for scrap on my furring because I'm going through all my windows and doors so I'm going to have those extra pieces ready. You can do it any way you want to. Everybody estimates a little bit different. Okay, I'm stop here at the garage. I'm going to click my escape button. And I'm going to start over again by clicking the green button over here. And I'm going to start up here at this wall. We're not furring the garage. So we won't take off the furring in the garage. Hit escape, and my furring is done. Now when I get done with the digitizer, I like to go into my estimating tab and just take a look at it and make sure that everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and um, change the name of this right here. Um, I would like to also say that it's a 10 foot beam. This is just for information for myself when I go back and I'm going to use a 1 by 2 pressure treated. Okay. Now I'll expand that folder and take a look at this. 1 by 2 pressure treated 8 foot. I need 136 pieces. 88 cents each total price. One by two, 10 foot pieces, 22 pieces, or 10 foot, 22 pieces, 
one by four, 22 pieces, two dollars and sixty cents each. Coil nails, fifteen hundred, and my labor. Okay, so I'm happy with this. And um, another thing is, I don't have a bunch of different columns showing here when I do my takeoff. I just want to see my color, my takeoff which is 217 feet all the way around that house and um, my quantities, my units, my price each and my price total. I don't want to have all this extra stuff like usage and cost total and whatever. You can make other um, views. You can do other views um, for looking at, a different, looking at it in different ways. But on my takeoff, I just like to use the basic takeoff look uh, uh, view. Okay, so I'm good with this here with my exterior furring. Okay, remember I told you that I wasn't going to check off some boxes. Let me just show you something here. We're going to go back to this button up here, this Plan Swift icon. We're going to click on Job Properties. I want to bring this Properties window back up. And I'm going to go to my uh, miscellaneous options. And if I check uh, my calculate takeoff costs, if I check that box and click OK, now I have $615 for that furring. See, it added this row up for me. It added all these numbers here, 127, 25, 60. It added these up, so it told me the furring labor and material for this wall I just did is $615. Now you have to be careful here because I turned this on. It not only added this 615, but all these other numbers here, it's added down here at $1,231. What it did now is it added this whole column. So this is, would be wrong for my estimate. So be sure that this is only to look at if you want to see what a one wall costs. So I want to go back to my properties window and I want to turn that off. Don't keep this on during your takeoff. This is just to look at something if you want to see what a wall type costs. See now I'm down to $615. That's the true number for this takeoff. Okay, now that I've done my furring, I'm going to click back at home and I'm going to do my window bucks, okay? I'm going to do a point count. So I'm going to click this point count here, and I'm going to type in window bucks. Okay, these are my window bucks. First floor furring. I'll leave it in that folder. And there's no options here because this isn't a template like these up here are templates we're going to go down and use these other parts so I'm going to click OK and I'm going to go around here let me start down here by the garage and I'm just going to click on every window to count these windows Now, if you don't buck the windows like a wood-framed house, then you don't need to do this part. This is a, a cement block house. We need to buck these window openings. <clears throat> so there, hit Escape. I have 15 openings, and I'm going to go to my Estimating tab, highlight my window bucks, come down here to Window Bucks, expand this folder, and I'm going to double-click on my wood furring. Here I have three uh, bucks per window. It takes three bucks per window. You can change that to anything you want. And um, I'm going to use a one by four pressure treated for the buck. And that's it. 
I'm going to click OK. Then I'm going to double click on my nails. And I got bucks per window. I have four. So I'm going to change that to three. Well, actually, um, yeah, I'm going to keep three win three bucks. Um, we're going to use a one by eight. It's going to be eight foot long, inch and a half coil nails, and the nails are 12 inches on center or whatever you your code is where you're at. Click OK. And we can put some caulking in there, and I have number of bucks is going to be um, three. Well, I, I lied to you there. That's not true, but what I'm going to do is just put three in there for right now and click OK. I'll go back to that in a second. Now double click on the window buck subcontract, and in case I change the prices in my database, I want to go back and um, refresh this, so I'm going to do when to buck subcontract. Just click it again, because if you refresh anything in your database, it won't refresh it to your new price unless you refresh it like that. Okay, now we'll expand this folder and see how many bucks I have. I have 45 pieces. So <clears throat> in the Vulcan caulking or you can use any kind of caulking you want. Where it asked me how many bucks, number of bucks, I didn't know that until I opened up this and looked at it. It's 45. So I put 45 bucks in there. And then this calculates how many tubes of caulking that you'll need for 45 pieces of a buck. I have one tube should do 50 feet. That's how it's calculated. So it says I need eight tubes to do these 450 feet of, or 45 times 8, whatever the footage is, it's all calculating properly. You need eight tubes, small tubes of caulking. So now our window bucks are done, and I'm happy with this. Everything come out with the price total, okay? And so now uh, I'll do my window wraps. So I'm going to go back to my page here and well let's do our door bucks okay so let's click on this point count again and let's say these are door bucks so we'll start by the garage again and we'll click the single doors there's a door single door and this is a double door so we won't click that we won't click these double doors we're just going to do the single doors first, okay? So there's two single doors. And we can just go ahead and um, click on the double doors. They'll take more bucks than the single one as well. All right. Okay, well now there's since there's a couple different ways to use the drywall plug-in, I'm going to show you a different way, I think. And I'm going to take the the door bucks. I'm going to delete the door bucks here and start over. Okay. Now the window bucks can be done the same way. I just didn't use that digitizer. I wanted to show you how you can use the parts separately. Up here I have a template called window and door uh, openings. So we're going to do the door bucks now. This is a double door buck. So let's click on this. And we have three bucks per door. We're going to use a one by four. And you want to always refresh these in case you change the prices in your database. And then we'll use an 8 foot length on that buck. The nails, or inch and a half nails, we'll use. Let's refresh them. And the caulking. We have different types of caulking you can use. Okay. And 
Now we'll click our double doors. Well, now here's something you're going to need to know for yourself. This front door is actually going to be a bucked with a 2x4, and these doors here are probably PGT doors, so they're going to be bucked with 1x4s. So I'm going to just escape that, and those three double doors are going to be 1x4. So that's exactly what I picked. I picked 1x4. I need eight of them, and the coil nails, and the Vulcan, and the door bucks. Now we'll go back to home, and let me get this 2x4 one. So I have a double door here, and um, I want to change the color of that. We'll make it a little bit lighter, and I want to change this to a 2x4 buck. This is just, you, you got to know what you're... what the plan's asking for. Okay. And all of this should stay the same, the nails and the caulking, and click OK, and then just hit that front door as a 2x4. And hit Escape. Go back to my estimating tab and look at it. 2x4, I need three of them. Coil nails, Volcom, door buck. Okay, so I'm good there. All right. Now these are the double, these are the ones I deleted from over here and they didn't delete them in the estimating tab so I'm going to delete them now. Okay, go back home and let's do our single doors. Single door bucks right here. Click that and we're going to change the color. Oh no, we'll leave that. <coughs> one by four bucks or whatever size of the buck is that your window calls for. I have two and a half bucks per door in here. You can put whatever you want. And uh, my door buck subcontract, I want to refresh that in case I change the prices in the database. And my nails, click on the nails I want or refresh them. And the caulking. Plant Swift's not a live program, so when you go in and change your prices in the database, they won't automatically change until you refresh them. I have two single doors. Click Escape. Okay. Now, what I've done here is I've got all my bucks. i got my double door bucks, my single door bucks, and my window bucks. Now I need to get my wraps. So... <clears throat> Down here we're going to do uh, window wraps, so let's go do our window wraps. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to use a 1x4 to wrap the inside of the window, and we'll use 8 foot pieces, and we'll have 3 wraps per window. We'll use the uh, same inch and a quarter, inch and a half nails, and eight inches on center, click OK. Our windows, now I'm going to put this right behind this one here. Now I don't usually do any talking when I do my takeoff, so I could do it a lot faster if I wasn't talking I'm just going through it, banging it out. Now I'll get my door wraps, my single door wraps. Click that. I'm going to use 1x4s. 10 foot pieces, 2.5 per door. Single door wrap. So I've got one here and i got one here. Hit escape. i got my double door wraps. <coughs> The reason being, you're going to take more more wraps per door. You need three for a double door. <clears throat> now this front door is a double door, same one by four wraps on the inside. All right, there we go.
Now we've got our door wraps and our window wraps that quick. Okay, and here again I always go back to my estimating tab and I look and see what I did. My window wraps, I have uh, everything's calculating, 45 pieces, got my nails. Everything where it looks good. Okay. Now you can notice I don't have no labor in the wraps because this is included in the furring price. When I pay the guys to fur the house, they get that's when they get paid to wrap these windows. All right, so let's minimize all of this. And right now I'm done with my furring. So I'm going to close that furring folder. I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to call this one framing. All right, I'm going to go back to my home. And I'm going to turn off uh, all these digitizers so I can see high digitize items. Now I can start fresh with my interior walls. <coughs> and do the takeoff there. Now my interior walls, um, they're all going to be 10 foot studs because the rooms, they say they're 10 foot, so I'm, this beam is 10 foot. Now this here is 12 foot, right here it's a 12 foot to 13 foot, so I'm going to assume that this beam is 12 foot high, and then back down here we've got it back down to 10 foot. So these these studs right here are possibly going to be um, 12 foot studs all the way to here and um, this is a 14 foot ceiling so these studs here we're going to go up to 14 foot I'm going to call these walls 14 foot so that's the way I'd do it from here click, click home now I'm going to use my segment on the walls because I want to just click from one end of a wall to another end of a wall. So I'm going to do my framing only. Now you can do this any way you want to, but I'm going to show you how I do it. Framing only. I'm going to click this here, and I'm going to put interior walls. foot okay um, I'm going to change this folder to the first floor framing and if it's only a one-story house um, actually we can just put framing which I'm going to do hit your tab button go into my framing folder I'm going to do a 12 foot stud. The wall's 12 foot high. The studs I'm going to use are 3 and 5 8 Supreme track, or you can pick whatever track you want. I'm going to put the number of runs of track is 2, the length is 10, the track fast nails, track the nails on center, the framing screws, and of course all these drop down windows you can pick anything you want in the database. Uh, these are all my defaults. I've already set them so I don't have to change any of this stuff. And I can just whip through my takeoff. And just change a couple of the things. <clears throat> and I'm going to lay out. I'm going to refresh this in case I usually change the prices here for uh, my framing. And I'll click OK. Now I just run through these wide walls are eight eight inches wide. Now I'll use two, three, and five eighths studs to make that eight inches. So I'll run two walls like that. There's 
approximate 12 foot walls. I'm going to run this one down here as 14 foot. Let me escape this, cancel this a second. What I'll do here is um, if I open this up here, I can copy that. Control C. And now when I start over again, I can just paste that right there and change this to 14 foot and change the color and the framings and the framings the walls 14 foot and all this is going to stay the same and the studs can be 14 foot Now the rest of them are going to be 10 foot. So I still have that on my clipboard, so I'll just paste that right there. <coughs> Change that to 10 foot. Change the color again. <coughs> 10 foot, 10 foot. Make sure I refresh these. Actually, the first time that you refresh it on this job, then you really don't need to refresh it anymore because that, I just changed it all. Uh, okay, so 10 foot, 3 and 5 eighths, 10 foot studs, 16 on center. I'm good. Now I'll just go through here and get the rest of my 3 and 5 eighths, 10 foot studs. It's the first time that I'm digitizing this house. This is for real. I'm bidding this house right now. And this is just how I do it. And I win a lot. A lot more jobs. than most people. I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. Um, what, what have they got going on here? Is this a wall? A door? Uh, I, don't, I don't know what that is. Looks like the architect started something here. We stopped. I'll just take it to there. Catch this wall.
I'll get two or three out of five jobs I bid because this is very accurate. I know exactly what it's going to cost for the material and the labor. It's just a matter of my overhead and profit that I want to make. Where I might come in against somebody else bidding against me. But if they're using the Plan Swift and my drywall plug-in, well, they're going to know exactly what the cost of of the job is. It's just a matter of how much do they want to make, and how much do I want to make. You know, and, and this takeoff is really if you you have the job, you want to know exactly how many, you know, what parts you need, how many studs, how many screws, all the particulars. Um, this is just one way of doing a takeoff, but you have to digitize the walls anyway. So I'm not wasting any time. I'm just going through here, and I'm digitizing all my walls. So. It's not taking me any more time to drop in my parts. They're all there, even though I don't really care right now if I get the job or not. Now, these walls here, my knee wall, um, I'm just going to run these at 10 foot as well, and I just have some extra studs. Okay. Mm. I think that's it. Oh, I missed the wall right here. Just go through and check and see if you know. You gotta take your time and go through your job as well. It's not just the computer's not gonna do everything for you. Okay, I'm happy with that. Okay, I got it all. I'm gonna click escape. Okay. Now I've got my framing done. Look at go to my estimating tab, and check out my framing, my interior 12 foot walls. Okay, everything's adding up. I got 10, 34, 35, 138, 46, 52. Just want to make sure I got numbers in here that there's no errors that I forgot to check something off in one of the boxes that asked me a question. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. So there, I'm done. I got my furring, and I got my framing. Now I have a coffer ceiling here and one here. I got, uh, looks like I got a coffer ceiling here. So we can do those takeoffs. All right, <clears throat> now we're going to go through and do this master suite coffer ceiling, and I'm just going to name them all the same. So go down here. I got a coffer soffit. So I'll click that. This is going to give me my angle, and um, I'll just leave the name there, coffer soffits. It's going to go in the framing folder. We check the framing. I'm going to use inch and a half by inch and a half angle. I'll use around this dotted line on on the the bottom part, and then I'll um, use track against the wall. Or no, what we do down here, and you can do it however you want. We we'll run angle around the exterior of this room, and we'll run angle around this part here, and then we'll run air angle around the ceiling as well. So this inch and a half angle is what we're going to use, 10 foot pieces. I'll need three pieces of it because I'm going to go one, two, three. And inch and five eight studs we'll use for the uh, vertical and the horizontal, two foot horizontal piece. And it's 10 foot to 10 foot eight, so it's just an eight inch actually 
um, vertical piece. So let's just say I need a three-foot stud, two foot here, and go up eight inches, just go up a foot. So I need a three-foot stud. And 16 on center, it says soffit stud length. I'm going to put three foot. And order stud length. Well, if I get a, a nine-foot stud, I can get three pieces out of a nine-foot stud. Um, I can get four pieces out of a 12-foot stud. So you just order the stud you want to order. I'll, I'll do an order of a 12-foot stud. And this is going to tell me how many uh, three-foot pieces I need, and we're going to convert it to 12-foot studs. And then that's that's how it will calculate. So I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to just go through here. You can do each room individually, at, you know, one at a time, too, if the studs are going to be a little bit longer. But it's really not going to make me win or lose the job. So I don't want to take uh, too much time estimating this in case I don't get it. So I'm just getting an estimate right now. And uh, I want to be, you know pretty accurate more more than um possibly I need but again I don't want to spend a whole day doing a takeoff on a job I might not get and so with my overhead and profit and all I'm going to put extra money in there to cover something that I might have missed so it looks like you got two ceilings in this house and then three ceilings and that's it this is going to be an easy sweet house to do Hit escape, go to my estimating tab and take a look at that ceiling. Okay, I need 34 pieces of angle, 21 12 foot studs, and I got my labor, dollar a foot, pay them, so that's it. Okay, that, that's it for my framing. Now I'm going to. Uh, Hide all my digitizers again, and I'm going to do my drywall takeoff. So let me go to my estimating tab, close my framing folder, click in this white area, click new folder, and name this drywall. Okay, go back home, and I just want to do my drywall in this. Each room at a time, I do one room at a time. It don't take very long. I'm going to click this drywall only. <clears throat> um, and I'm, I'm going to do drywall only 10 foot. This is going to be the 10 foot area. And I'm going to use 10 foot on the, the drywall height. I'm going to... Um, this is calling out for half inch regular drywall. I'm going to do one side. I'm going to use a 4 by 12 sheet. I'm going to use an inch and eighth screw. I'm going to use a box of joint compound, a 500 foot roll of tape, and my hanger subcontract and my finishing subcontract. Just to refresh those prices, I'm going to say OK and go through this room one room at a time. Oh, I'm not I don't want to do that. Okay, hit escape and double click on this and copy that. Hit cancel and delete. Make sure that you click on this here and before you hit delete. You want to delete everything, then go to your estimating tab in the drywall, make sure it's not there. Okay, go back home. 
I'll start over. I, I, I wanted to pick a, I used a segment. I want to use a linear, drywall linear takeoff. So it's just that easy to, 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 to delete something and start over. So I'm going to paste in there that 10 foot in the drywall. I'm going to change that to 10 foot. I'm going to use the, the regular half inch. You learn different ways to search for the parts. One side, 4 by 12, same thing. We're going to keep all this the same. I changed my labor prices so much, I just want to make sure that I refresh those to get the right price that I'm using right now. Okay, go through and digitize the room. I go through my openings, through my uh, all my openings solid, and then I don't have to worry about um, adding a percentage for waste. Now the way I usually um, that you can estimate too, if you have a board number that you want to charge your customer, I just charge them so much a board, and I want to know how many boards are in the house, and you don't have to do all that framing takeoff. Um, you can just just do this drywall takeoff, just to run through here and see how many. Um, boards that the house is going to take. And I click my C button here to close it. If I'm going around a a room like that and if I get my three points, then I can hit my C and close it. Now I went through and did the metal takeoff and everything for you on this. Normally, I, the way I've been in my jobs, I just go through, I got a board number, how much I'm going to charge them per board uh, on each type of home. So I'm just going to go through and actually do the, the board count. How many boards is the house going to take? And then I'm done with the estimating. I mean, you know, 20 minutes and I got this job bid. Went a little bit further for you to just to show you how I do all of it. Once I get the job, I have to do this anyway with the metal. And like the different type of board right now, I'm not going through getting my den shield you know what I think I'm gonna do that okay Hit escape I'm gonna show you how to get the different type of board and let's start right here and just go to there and this would be door rocker den shield Okay, I want to stay in a 10-foot area, so um, let me start, let's see, I'll start right here at this bathroom. Move your scroll button too fast. Hit your back button if you want to get back a little further. I didn't get that right on the end. If you roll the scroll button too quick, that menu comes up. Just hit escape, close it out. There we go.
Okay, this laundry room out here is all five eighths for the outside of this wall. So I'll do that separately. And then I have my twelve foot um and my fourteen foot areas. So I'm just gonna assume that this area in here is all fourteen foot and the rest of this is twelve foot. So if I do drywall only and I put twelve foot, change the color. Whatever color you want, it doesn't matter. Twelve foot. Okay. Hold it right there. Start over over here. Let's get 12 foot from here. Okay. And one more time, and I'll do my 14 foot. Change the color. at my estimating a second. Well, I forgot to change it to the right folder, so I gotta look for it. Here they are. Got my drywalls in here, hold my shift key, highlight all of these, use my left arrow to get it out of that folder. Arrow down, put it inside this folder. Okay. Half inch drywall. Ten foot drywall. Um, this one here, I'm going to delete that one. That's the one I deleted because I was doing a segment and I wanted to do a linear. Okay, 137 sheets of drywall, 22 boxes of mud. Okay, that looks good. 11 sheets of drywall. Everything looks good here. Uh, 5 8 This is wrong. I forgot to make this drywall 5 8 Or half inch, I mean. <clears throat> so I got half inch regular joint compound. 14 foot, half inch regular, okay, go back home, see what else I got left. I want to do this garage wall out of 5 8 so I'm going to do drywall only. And we've got 10 foot, I'll change this uh, color again. It's going to be 10 foot drywall, or use 5 8 one side. Hanging, finishing, click OK. I did put it in the right folder, but it should go in the right folder because I was on that folder. So I don't know what's going on here, so I'm just going to catch this wall like that. I mean, it's a couple sheets of drywall. You're not going to win or lose a job over that. So it just looks like a door just hanging off into nowhere. All right, there's my five eighths for that wall. Okay, now I got to do. Uh, this company likes me to use Den Shield. 
for their showers and what areas. So I'm gonna um I'm gonna put um ten foot wet area. Alright, and change the color. I'll use this light blue here. The drywall is gonna be ten foot. And we're going to use Den Shield, half inch, one side, and that's a four by eight sheet. I won't need any joint compound on that type of board, and I won't need any tape. And I've got my hanger, and I won't need a finisher. All right. And I'm in the framing folder, so I need to put it in the drywall folder, and I'm good to go. Wrap the whole room, and I takes care of my waste. I'm not going to run short on that. Now, this is all glass opening here, so... We're not going to just buy Den Shield for the glass opening, so we're just going to catch that there. <clears throat> okay, and I'm done with the wet area. I'm done with my drywall on my walls. I got a four foot knee wall right here. <clears throat> I'm going to put the knee wall. All right, change the color. And my drywall is only going up four foot, let's say there. I'm using um, half inch regular, two sides, um, four by twelve sheet. This all be the same here. And I'm just going to run one side of this wall because I clicked two sides of the wall. So it's going to calculate for two sides. You can do it that way as well. I like to go into each room though. Sometimes the ceiling heights are different on both sides of the wall. <clears throat> you can do it any any way you want. Actually, there's a there's a hundred different ways. I just wanted to show you um, how I do it. If you're not really, if it actually if you're just a beginning estimator. Okay, now I want to get my drywall on the ceiling, and it's all five eighths in every room, the garage and everything. So I'm gonna go to view, and I'm gonna hide my digitized items to get them out of my way, so I can see the wall I'm working on. And I'm gonna click back to home. I'm gonna go into this um, new template area. I'm gonna do drywall for the ceiling. And I'm going to do, it's in the drywall folder, 5H drywall, one layer, or one side, 4x12 sheet, all this. You can change all these defaults to your defaults if you want to, so you don't have to click so many different things. C button, and there's my drywall for my ceiling. Go to my estimating tab, look at my drywall for my ceiling. I got 59 sheets, everything looks good there. Okay, I, um, joint tape, it didn't calculate the tape. Let's see what happens 
here. Okay. <coughs> Let me click the 500 foot roll. And here I got two rolls of tape. Hang in, finish it. All right. So there you go. That's all your drywall. I think I, I better look at my framing. I think I might have put a drywall. Yep, a drywall in the wrong folder. That's why I keep going back and forth looking and see and making sure that I put everything in the right folder and keep everything organized so it's everything is neatly, decently, and in order. So when I go back through here and I look at stuff, I know what I got. I know what, what walls I did the takeoff on. I know what's going on here. Uh, okay, so this job here, my cost is $10,928 for my drywall, my framing, my furring, my hanging. This whole job is $10,928 is what it's going to cost me. Now I'm going to go back in here and um, I'm going to show all my digitizers and take off that ceiling digitizer there and just make sure that I went through and digitized um, everything I needed to. This is a very small house, 2,495 square feet. Okay, that is the takeoff. Oh! oh excuse me. <laughs> track. I have the 3 and 5 eighth track. I need 75 pieces. Uh, 14 foot studs. I need 5 pieces. 12 foot studs. I need 35 pieces. 10 foot studs. Okay, so this is where you're just checking to see everything adding up here. Your 5 eighth drywall. I need 67 pieces. Screws. 1,091 screws. A joint compound box. 36 boxes. Rolls of tape. I need 11 rolls of tape. And none, none. This is where I deleted um, a couple of those Vulcan. Okay, so I want to get rid of this none right here and go back into my estimating page. Expand all. And, um, well, actually, uh, it was in my drywall. If you know where it's at, real quick, see, that's what I'm saying. You can go in here and and find stuff. Here's my nun. Remember I took out the tape, the mud and the tape. Um, use your control button. Hold the control and you can do these two like that. Delete that and my hanger, I did, or my finisher. I didn't need my finisher. So I'm going to delete those three items and go back to my reports. And the nun is gone. Okay. So now what I do is I want to take and export all of my framing material to send it to my supplier. So I'm going to type in here um, metal package. Metal order package. And then of course you want to 
save it in the job. I just did the takeoff on it. Let's make a new folder. Call this uh, metal order. Star Homes, Boatman Residence, Metal Order. And we'll click Save. It already exists. We're going to replace it. It opens up. Excel opens up in here. And here's what I do now. I got to pull out everything, pull out everything in here. Ay, ay, ay. Hope you heard that. I got to pull out everything in here except for the metal. So I'm going to highlight the whole spreadsheet and I'm going to unmerge the cells and then I'm going to get rid of the A column and I hold my control button down and um, I'm going to leave the rest of this stuff in here. Okay, I'm going to delete my A column uh, and I'm going to expand the name and I'm going to double click here and try to make all these columns a little bit smaller if I can. Make that a little bigger. Um, I want to see how I have some cells are wider than others. So I'm going to highlight all of them. And I'm going to format and auto fit height. So now they're all thin cells. Uh, that's because Palm Beach ink was down and it went a little bit. Okay. Um, now, the, I need this is my metal package. The drywall screws right here. See in my phase, I got drywall and metal. So I'm going to take out my drywall. Um, I'm going to delete this. I don't want that in the metal package. And the drywall here, I don't want this in the metal package. I'm going to do all the wood. This this right here to den shield. We'll get rid of these three rows. And I got the rest is metal. We'll get rid of the drywall here. Okay, the wafer head screws will be in the metal. I didn't have a phase um, for the screws. Okay, a joint compound. I'm not going to have that or the tape or the the Vulcan I need. Okay, delete all that. So I'm just putting together a metal package now. Plan Swift doesn't do all of that by itself, so I'm going to delete um, these prices right here. I'm holding my control button down, clicking on the totals here. And get rid of all this where Plan Swift totaled it. And I'll delete that. And now I want to add it all up on this report now. Click my auto sum. And so now it's telling me that this metal package is going to cost me $2,400. Okay. And then I just emailed this to my supplier, and he can look at this inch and a half coil nails. I need 
2,882 of them, or he's got to sell me a box. doesn't matter. Uh, the inch and a half by inch and a half angle, I need 34 pieces. Inch and 5 eighths supreme framing stud, 20 gauge, 12 foot piece, I need 21 of them. I need uh, 1 by 2 pressure treated 10 foot, 22 pieces. And this is, I just emailed this to my supplier, and he sends out my metal package. And that's the metal, okay? So I'm going to um, save this, and I'm done with that report. Now I want to do another report. I'm going to um, export another spreadsheet, and I'm going to call this um, drywall order. All right, and we'll make this the drywall order. And I'll click Save, and it opens Excel. And now I'll do the same thing here. I'm going to highlight the whole spreadsheet. I'm going to unmerge the cells, and then I'm going to get rid of this first A column. This first A column is a type. There's nothing in there, so I just delete that. And then I want to make this name bigger. So we can see what the name of the material is. And see how I have these big old cells? Well, that's because this Palm Beach Iron, my vendor here, is crunched up. So I expand that. Now I can click or highlight the whole spreadsheet and I can format it and auto fit the rows. And there's still something else that needs to be fit. There we go. Okay. Now, again, I'm I'm going to make these small as I can by clicking here. All right. Now, I need my drywall, all my phase here. Let's get rid of the the metal phase. Uh-huh. And let's just keep the drywall. The wood phase I don't need. And the metal. And we we'll just keep the drywall. This was the metal. Now just be careful what rows you delete. I'm going through it real quick because I'm used to it. But you make sure that you you click the right rows and don't take out the wrong ones. Okay, and then again I'm gonna hold my control button down and highlight these figures that Plan Swift totaled for me here and delete them. And then I'll just scroll down here and highlight all these, auto sum it. That way I'll know how much my drywall package is. Put this on currency. 2625 bucks, and here's my drywall package for my supplier. I just email them this sheet. I mean, you don't have to give them the price each and the price total if you don't want to. You can delete these columns as well. Um, but, you know, I like to show them this one to invoice me. I can uh, say these are, these are the prices that you gave me. This is what it should cost with tax. Save that, and now I'm done with my metal package oh no um, oh, I thought I hit the wrong X so I'm done with my metal package and my um, drywall package now I want to look at my labor my subcontract all my labor on this is saying that I got fifty eight hundred thirty five dollars in labor and so um, what I do now is I'm going to export export this and I'm going to do a um, layout for my layout guy. How much does the layout pay? And I'll put the layout price. Open this up. <clears throat> Highlight the whole spreadsheet. Unmerge the cells. Get rid of the column A. And here I hold my control button down. I can get rid of the folder type, the description. Um, uh, 
that's all. Um, I mean, delete these columns, expand the name column. The coffer. Now I'm looking for layout, so I'm going to get rid of the hanging and and everything except for the layout. Delete this. And delete this. So my layout's going to cost $365 to lay it out. Okay. Um, save. And close. And now export again, export it again, and let's call this framing, or let's do the furring. I usually do the uh, framing and furring is all together. Same people do it. Framing price. Get rid of the hanging and the layout. And when the box and the furring stay in there. take too much you know don't say it takes a little bit of time but you, you can get what you need out of this this program okay mm. once you do it a few times you start banging it out it don't take long at all so now my framing package with the furring is going to run a fifteen hundred and seventy five dollars save that close it Export to Excel again, and we'll get the hanger hanging price. Okay. And merge the cells. Delete a couple of columns. Finishing and you're done.
All right, and that concludes this video. I think um, we're about done here. I went through everything and showed you how I do a, a job from start to finish. Now, if I want to um, look at it this way, I can see um, my material here on this detailed estimate by type. My material is five thousand dollars. My my subcontract is fifty eight hundred dollars. So my cost is ten thousand nine hundred and twenty eight dollars. Okay. So now this part's up to you. You go back to your job properties. You back go back into your costing. What I do is I'll put a percentage on the material markup. I'll put a percentage on the subcontract markup, and that's it. I won't use any of this other stuff, but you can if you want to. And now my material is $6,600. My subcontract is $7,500. Now i got a $14,207 bid. So um, that's what your... Uh, well, let me back up a second and see what I did here. Let me take off this 30%. I should have wrote this down just to show you one more thing here. 30%. So we've got $10,928.92. Okay. So now we're going to go back in here and job properties. Costing information will mark up the material 30% and the subcontract 30%. And click OK. Now we got 14,207.58, and we'll subtract the 10,928.92, and so we made $3,278 profit on this job. Um, but that's that's all up to you. How much profit you need, how much overhead you need, and you you bid the job however way you want. Um, let me see now if that's it. Okay, one other thing um, that I do is I go to my estimating tab. I can open expand um, all of these folders here to show the parts that I got in there and the framing um, actually I can you know expand everything here and I can export this into Excel if I want to show my supplier um, what I had one by two pressure treated um, Volcom I got the studs that I have I have the three and five eight studs if you wanted to export this into Excel so that you can print it out and send it, uh, I got a, a glitch right here. Um, you can export it to Excel and copy and paste this into QuickBooks or do anything that you want to do with it uh, for your estimate. And, of course, your estimate will have to come from another program of QuickBooks or however else you write it up. And that concludes this video.